I'm very grateful to God uh, and grateful for my faith, grateful for uh, growing up in a Methodist parsonage in Mississippi and different places and um, just the family that I was reared in and that has brought me to this place. I'm most grateful for uh, my experience in serving the uh, church in the uh, North Texas Conference and my first ministry, great ministry that I was a very, uh, part of was in the uh, Wichita Falls District. And as I was crossing campus one day during my uh, course of study school, and I met Dr. Zan Holmes, and he asked me where was I uh, ministering at. And I told him in Wichita Falls, and he said, uh, well, that's uh, the ministry, that's the uh, wilderness. And it's always good to be able to start in the wilderness because that's where God carried his people through the wilderness. And I felt like God was moving me in that direction as well. I'm most grateful for God's call upon my life. I began exploring a call when I was in high school. And uh, my mother, ever the practical one and the elementary school teacher, always said, you know, you better get your teaching degree because people may lose the religion, but they'll always have kids. And so I followed her advice, but I did follow my call and went into ministry. Um, I'm most grateful for the amazing church members, the members of the churches where I have served through all these years. Um, they've taught supported, um, followed and led me in this amazing journey of 48 years. I have worked with some wonderful colleagues in the churches where I have served, particularly at First United Methodist Church in Richardson. And I am most grateful, I guess, for the opportunities to follow my passion in missions and outreach, um, serving alongside laity and ministries in the local area as well as places around the world that have experiences that have enriched my life and strengthened my faith. There are so many things but I've kind of boiled it down to a few. Uh, follow your passion, be faithful to your calling, uh, be flexible and that's a hard one to learn sometimes. Learn to listen and be a good follower and always be a compassionate servant leader. After ordination, uh, that I would suggest that they would continue their studies uh, until uh, they have found uh, that God is still weaving uh, the assurance of them, uh, giving them uh, uh, the greatest chance of their life to uh, continue in their ministry. Practice good self-care. Take care of yourself and, um, and know that uh, it's hard to care for others if you aren't taking care of yourself. And I had a, a friend in a church before I became a pastor who, when I was frantic about leaving and the things that I'd been involved in in the church, she said, sweetie, <laughs> when you think you're indispensable, put your hand in a bucket of water, take it out, and see how long the hole lasts. And so I've kind of taken that to heart for my, my life when I think I'm getting too involved to back up a little bit and, and give space for others to fill in that hole. I would also say, um, Preach and teach the Wesleyan way of salvation. Use the language of our denomination and that uh, unique understanding of grace that we have. And then finally, do no harm, do all the good you can, and tend to the ordinances of God. You'll do well. Uh, my plan for retirement is something that I 
learned that as a part of in, in the uh, Wichita Falls District as I was a part of the Kairos Prison Ministry. And so this is something that I will continue, hopefully continue to do. Uh, I have also uh, like making a difference in the people's lives who are incarcerated, uh, who have been incarcerated. A uh, sabbatical for about three or four months. Um, looking forward to visiting churches for a while and, and just being a participant in worship. And then I'll look forward to settling in in Forney at First United Methodist Church. Uh, I'm retiring from the conference, but I plan to work full time, continue to work full time at First United Methodist Church um, in the ministry in which I am now serving uh, with the blessing of our senior minister, Clayton Alphant, as Minister of Missions and Outreach. So uh, my ministry will continue, but just my relationship with the conference will change. And so for the time being, it will be life as usual.